very warm welcome to everyone. Um, we're starting Hell on 7th Dare to Share event. Um, for those of you joining the first time, Dare to Share is Hell on's platform for sharing our thoughts and our recent projects within the uh, field of design and customer experience. And we have a super interesting topic for you guys today. My name is Lotte Ulkunen and I'm the design director here at Hell on Helsinki and I'm going to be your host for today. In case you're not familiar with Helen, we're a design agency um, with offices in Helsinki and in London. And what our expertise is, is uh, combining human-centric design with business design and machine learning to help our clients create great customer experiences. Now, we've always aimed to push the boundaries of design and customer experience, and today's talk is just about that. Uh, and we're going to hear a talk about how Helen has been doing that by combining data science with the design process. Before we kick off just a few practical things, your mics are currently muted. Um, we're going to first hear a talk and then towards the end, we're going to have a Q&A session and you're going to have the chance to ask some questions. Uh, you can either use the chat function for that uh, or the Q&A function, um, or you can raise your hand at the end um, and we can then unmute your mic and you can ask the question in person. And we'd love to hear from you, so don't be shy. You can, you can write up your comments uh, and questions during the whole talk, and I'll try to answer some of them directly, and some of them we can save then for the Q&A session in the end. Um, we have a couple of polls, and we can start with our first one. So we'd love to hear from you. So how would you describe your relationship to artificial intelligence and machine learning in CX development? There's a few choices. and. Let's take a few minutes, everybody can respond. So it looks like um, most of you are interested in AI machine learning, but don't know where to start yet. Well, I'm glad you're here. You'll probably get some ideas during the talk. Some of you already have some experience with AI and machine learning. That's excellent. Also, we'd love to hear from you about your experiences. And some are developing new approaches in AI and machine learning. We have a super nice group of people, I can tell. So today's talk will be presented by Juha Krunkvist. Uh, he's our principal designer and one of the pioneering service designers in Finland. He has over 15 years of experience in utilizing human-centered design in business development, and he's been a really active part uh, in Helen's journey in constantly developing our design practice. We're going to start with Juha's talk about the topic of new technologies in CX development, and then later on, um, we're going to continue with an informal discussion and Q&A session with our AI and machine learning experts, Helon CTO, uh, Nico Reunanen, and our design uh, lead, Joachim Eriksson. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to you. Go ahead. Thanks for the kind introduction, Lotta. And uh, I will start by sharing my screen. So, as said, uh, our topic uh, for today is about embracing new technologies in developing customer experiences. Uh, I will have a short introduction to the topic, um, and in this introduction I'll, I'll introduce you to different aspects that new machine learning technologies have an impact in. After this, I will go over a few use cases, how they can be used as part of our work with customer experiences, uh, but uh, I would like to start with a short story, uh, which I hope will illustrate the size of the change uh, we are facing in our work. So, some of you might know what is happening in this picture. Um, this is actually a designer creating a page for a newspaper back in the 70s. Before computers, graphic designers had to do the entire job in a manual way. They literally had to copy, cut, and paste everything. It was a very uh, time-consuming way of uh, doing design. With the advent of visual computing in the 80s, the whole industry was overturned, uh, with designers' time shifting from placing pictures to editing their colors, size, and even improving their resolution. In short, uh, this overturned the whole value that designers could give to the industry while at the same time gave a difficult time for those who couldn't adapt. 
Now here is our design director uh, that you just saw. Um, uh, she is conducting an affinity analysis based on customer interviews. Uh, this picture was taken before uh, Corona hit us and put everything online. What is happening here is affinity mapping. It is a standard process that we use in customer experience design to distill insights out of large amounts of customer data. When doing the method, our team goes through uh, the transcripts of interviews um, or observations, writes quotes on post-its and arranges them into thematic groups. These thematic groups are then used to illustrate key aspects of our findings. For example, key needs, design drivers, customer profiles and so on. So doing an affinity analysis forms a very important part of the design process. Typically a team of two to three people works on this at least for half a day uh, or a day, even longer, depending on the amount of data. A lot of value is created in this process, especially when constructing the insights, but it also uses up a lot of the resources we have available for the project. Uh, what you see here uh, is a video capture of me using a new AI power feature in Miro, uh, which is a platform we have used uh, for information processing and workshops since the pandemic began. As you can see in the video, the AI highlights quotes uh, from a large mass that are similar to the one I have selected, uh, and thus helping me to create thematic groups almost automatically. Now, of course, it's not perfect and it cannot replace the human sense-making ability. Humans are much better than algorithms in understanding cultural contexts uh, and uh, responding to specific research questions. They also need help in interpreting the groups and form forming insights based on them. But it does help uh, and in speeding up the analysis process significantly. By using this feature, we are able to conduct the analysis with a smaller team, even with one person and in much less time. We believe that at the moment, designers and the whole custom experience as, uh, we, uh, as, as a field uh, is on the cusp of a similar change to the advent of digital design. This will completely refocus the value that designers and managers are able to give their clients and to the world. We are able to use less time in phases that don't create that much value and put more effort in those parts that actually create the value. It is easy to feel threatened uh, when facing change, but that response leads to future failure. At Hellon, we believe that these new technologies are our friends and they help us to do our work better. However, we want to be the ones that are defining the change, not the ones that are following it. Five years ago, we realized that the technology is mature is enough to start work with, and we started exploring it together with a data scientist. After the first explorative projects, we took a step towards building, uh, building on the technology. We got some early successes and we were awarded at the 2019 Global Service Design Competition for innovative use of new technologies in service design. At first, we tried adapting it into tools that we could sell directly to the clients. But after a few years doing that, we noticed that the actual value lies in adapting it to the main way we work, not just how our clients work. Most recently, we have been refocusing on utilizing these technologies to develop our Design 2.0 approach, which seamlessly combines design, business, and data. So when thinking about artificial intelligence and machine learning, discussion easily focuses around automating tasks and making human labor redundant. We believe that the real value lies in uniting humans with machines to work on tasks together. If you look at the left side of the equation, this is where humans excel. We are able to empathize with uh, people. We, we are super good in contextualizing information creating and telling stories, making decisions. This is our core strengths. On the right-hand side, you can see where machines are strong. They are able to quickly analyze uh, vast amounts of data. Their computing abilities are far superior. Uh, they are able to build predictions uh, based on data. And uh, also nowadays, they are able to adapt their um, approaches according to 
uh, to their own, own, own way of learning. What takes place in the middle uh, is augmenting the human ability to sense making and storytelling with the computational abilities of machine learning, while at the same time teaching the algorithm to understand our approach better and to be more accurate. We believe that the biggest value in customer experiences is created at this point where humans and machines are working hand in hand. So uh, if you look at uh, what, how can we utilize this new value? So first of all, uh, the value is created in helping our customers to create better and more impactful customer experiences. For example, use, by using this technology to go over their entire customer feedback in a flash with more accuracy than humans could ever do. And on the other hand side, uh, we are augmenting the work done by our designers. For example, by making it easier to analyze data or test our new service, uh, services with customers. Internally, we're talking about supercharging our designers with the technology. And of course, this impact can be extended to roles in customer experience outside the field of design as well. Together, we believe that these two form the main impact that the technologies have in the world of customer experience. Next, we can go a bit deeper into specific use cases opened up by these new technologies. So there are many tools and applications of artificial intelligence. Uh, we have been exploring many of them in, in Hello. And uh, here we want to share today um, some of them to spark thought and discussion. So the first topic um, is using machine learning to understand text and automatically clustering topics. So uh, our AI solution, Aino, uh, we have developed a new uh, uh, application for it called Aino Reads. It's a text reading and organizing program which can allow us to compile thousands of customer sentence sentences into cluster themes for insight analysis. We can increase our quantitative insight potential across hundreds of customers without dedicating the time and resources that would be needed to anal analyze the data traditionally. We can also collect open response data in foreign languages, automatically translate that into any language needed. Neural network models are able to drill into sentence structures and focus on individual words and thus, for example, understand whether a sentence is positive in the beginning, but becomes negative towards the end. So putting this into context of a company, imagine if every single written customer feedback would automatically in real time be analyzed by your AI solution and understood contextually. This would enable all the feedback to be understood in context. CX managers would know in real time what are the pain problems and if, uh, if they would look at any time, given week or month, they would understand what their customers are really happy or angry about. And then know exactly what to fix, maybe using a service design approach. So the other use case uh, would be understanding speech. Uh, so, and in real time, create insights based on our dialogue with our customers. So we can tap into discussions of our staff, uh, our staff is having with the clients, uh, create a real-time feed for, uh, for our customer emotions. We can also react more quickly to customer events, experiences taking place, or use this understanding to make better sense of what is going on at each moment. So taking this into the next level of AI integration, what if these companies' uh, customer services would have an AI integrated that could understand subtle speech? Every single phone call is recorded already, but that recording would be analyzed by the AI. It would understand exactly what people are saying, how they are saying it, are they happy, sad, angry, and then translate that to text, which as uh, per the previous example, could be contextually analyzed. So combining this, it would allow companies to analyze, measure, and react to all incoming written and spoken customer service scenarios, understand what their customers are feeling, where they need to improve, and respond in much more efficient way. This would allow customer experience related improvements to be extremely accurate. But think about the sales side. 
every time a customer says, I would like X, pass the connection, expand insurance, the AI could automatically classify these as active leads, inform the sales team, and then proactive sales could be done. We have already done some pilot exploration using an e-commerce client connecting our solution directly with the customer's data from call centers. In the pilot, we tracked uh, the emotional curve maps, identifying how satisfied the customers were when the calls proceeded and could give immediate analysis how the customers felt at any given time. The third area is not about utterances or responses, but what is actually going on in our brains at each given moment. Here we can identify people's emotional responses as they happen, even if they don't write it or say it aloud. We can also potentially identify people's real responses from, uh, from behind what they are saying or feeling. So often we tell white lies or we twist the truth a bit or we say something to please the other person, but this would uh, cut through that and directly uh, show, us, uh, show us the emotion. So let's imagine what this could mean in de a design process. So here in our London office, Cameron is wearing a neuro tr neural tracker when we are evaluating a service for a telecom provider. He's shown a storyboard prototype of a future service and he's reading aloud the text describing how the service is uh, proceeding. The same evaluation that we used five weeks earlier to do, we did a thorough customer validation testing based on the same prototype. Here, a neuroscientist reached the same conclusions with one person in five minutes through identifying peaks in excitement and engagement during reading aloud of these storyboards uh, of the scenarios. This can provide further accuracy in evaluating the feelings of the customers. So lastly, we can use the technology to create a more focused experience in terms of which areas are most impactful to improve based on their conversion rate. Uh, as designers, uh, we are able to use this technology to determine what are the most impactful factors such as design drivers or uh, service features for our clients based on the customer provided data and ultimately identifying the most impactful areas of this service. This sort of analysis at the scale of quantified research uh, we are doing is, is done super fast using uh, Aino and it provides us with crucial decision making guidance that, uh, and we are able to quantify, uh, quantify use uh, numbers to uh, communicate uh, the results of our research to help them make better decisions and to back up what we have found out with hard numbers. Okay, so what does this mean in practice? Uh, let me tell a case example. Um, our client is a shopping center who have a budget to spend on improvements. Of course, they want to spend their budget on improvements that will preferably has as positive impact on their business as possible. If we look at shopping centers generally, the consensus on, in the field is, um, and, and what also their customers typically respond to questions, is that the selection uh, in place at this uh, shopping center is the most important factor, how they make a decision uh, of the shopping center. We want to use machine learning to test if this hypothesis is real. So we conducted uh, together with the uh, we, together with the client, we identified several important customer experience topics uh, that we asked the customers about. Instead of asking them to rate them, we asked them how they feel they are currently working in the shopping center. After that, we asked them about their interest in coming to this shopping center in the future. Based on this, we were able to model the behavior of customers and how these different customer experience aspects affect their behavior. Uh, the customers themselves prioritized three things in their choice whether to come again. One of them is the atmosphere. How does it feel to be there? What is happening? What is the music like? How do people like to spend time? This uh, includes uh, for the shopping center musical choices, different types of events, and people like staff and other customers. Free time means what activities are there on offer for experience. Um, Many of the customers didn't actually know, but the shopping center had many kind of uh, activity areas like gaming services, a movie theater, uh, and other free time activities. 
this was probably due to the Finnish customers not yet accustomed to uh, there being activities in, in the shopping center. Lastly, the selection came as a third impact. So what types of shops or purchasing op opportunities there were available. The biggest shock, shock was that the most impactful factor was uh, the atmosphere. So it was in fact three times more influential than the selection of stores in the center. Once we knew how influential the atmosphere was, we utilized our textual understanding algorithm to go through, through the open feedback regarding the atmosphere and distill concrete development areas that we should address. So in essence, we were able to both point the most impactful development direction and give them insights in what concrete development areas they should uh, change. After this, the client started heavily investing in events and making the center more enjoyable and interesting for their customers. So to wrap this presentation up, here are some final thoughts. At Hellon, when looking at the end-to-end -end, uh, project process, we use an additional two extra uh, diamonds, converting, uh, converting and diverging diamond, diamonds before the, uh, the traditional double diamond process starts. And here we are able to use AI with clients' own existing data to boost the proposal and insight phases. So by introducing um, uh, AI-driven insights before the project start, we can aim to make sure that this service design project investment, whatever it may be, has a better chance of targeting the right problem. So for example, in a project with Helsinki transport provider, HSL, we were able to use data uh, of the company to pinpoint the problem and then use service design as the methodology to improve it. If you look at the defining the problem phase, so uh, for example, here, uh, AI could uh, provide speech to text and contextual text analyze, analysis. So what if this service designer could use AI to create an affinity map of 1,500 or 15,000 interviews based on only 15? This would enable a world size affinity map of topics and opportunities as the human restrictions are removed. Also, the AI is much quicker and capable to analyze the connections of total randomly seeming factors, which could create opportunities that humans could miss. In the third phase, um, sorry, third phase uh, in building a solution. So what if AI could enable the creation of countless optimized ideas and strategies, allowing pre and pre prototyping by simulations. So we could identify how these different scenarios might turn out and affect the customer experience in the whole context of the customer before choosing to go live or use valuable resources for prototype. And of course, in last phase, uh, during testing, we can, could help identify customer deep sub subconscious emotional responses that enable us to measure the concept against business KPIs. So in this way, we could predict the financial return of the investment in any given experience and how uh, their NP is likely to be to develop after the launch of the service. So in conclusion, if we are able to utilize AI with the design process, we will be able to increase efficiency, but also open up huge potential for creating amazing new experiences for people to enjoy and companies to benefit from. So it is probably already clear to you, but we see that customer experience is a perfect playground for utilizing AI-based technologies. We at Hellon are constantly exploring new avenues where we can test and build new solutions. Thanks for listening to this introdu introduction. So if you're interested in joining us in our quest, don't hesitate to be in contact. Now we're li really looking forward to your questions and comments. Great, thank you, Juha. That was very inspiring. And I hope all of you kind of got great ideas from this presentation. Let's have our next interaction. Uh, we'd love to hear from you guys what you kind of AI and machine learning opportunities you find more interesting. So Yuha was telling us four case studies um, around different types of technology. We'd love to hear, hear how you thought, which ones spark most interest. Um, well, we wait. I have no answers. Let's see if the poll is <laughs> working or not. Um, but there's a question in the chat. Um, maybe we could cover 
in, in just a bit. Um, let me introduce our experts for the Q&A session. I'm going to end the poll. It looks like I'm not getting, getting any answers from there. So let's head on to the Q&A session and for the discussion. Um, sorry if there was an error with the poll. I would have asked you what kind of, kind of technologies you found most interesting, but we can get back to that. So for our Q&A session, um, we have our machine learning and AI experts, um, our CTO Nico Reona and lead designer Joachim Eriksson here online. Um, and they've been leading the development and implementation of Helon's in-house AI and machine learning tools. So exactly the right people you would want to ask questions. For the audience, you can now type in your questions either in the Q&A function or the chat function and we'll pick up from there. But um, before we start with those, uh, Nico, would you start by telling us about the exciting things that you do at Hellon? Cool, thanks. Hey, awesome so, so far and I'm so happy to be here. Uh, so, well, uh, my responsibility is pretty much like everything related to technology, like technology functions of so research development and teaching and figuring out the future directions with technology and design implementation, pub publishing, so on. My background is in computer science and mathematics, so Design is definitely interesting place to be, and 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 I have loved it right uh, uh, so far, and 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 loved the people here. And what has been cool? Well, there's many things. Many things have been cool, but let's pick one. And it has been like reimagining the and in, like reimagining and and implementing like ways to do design. Like figure out what could be a bit updated, a new way to do it in this almost boutique fashion. That I think it's nice to like if you use an analogy here, like paint paintings. But I think it's also as awesome and fun to kind of mix your own colors and build your brushes from scratch. And and um, just with different people here, different backgrounds, and and really great people around. So they also like really uh, uh, come along. So to get her like designing, implementing new things, rematching what the design can be. So that has been super cool. Great, thank you, Nico. Uh, and then Jokke, um, Joachim, that's his nickname, <laughs> in case you didn't figure that out. Uh, what have you found most interesting in combining data science in design work? Yeah, first of all, thank you, Juha. I think that was really, really nice and inspirational uh, starter for our discussion. And I think like uh, what I see as a designer, super interesting and inspirational is that, that we ha haven't only been kind of uh, improving the current ways we do design, but actually, like Nick already said, we have been actually thinking that what what more can we do and creating kind of more better tools for us to actually do stuff do design so i think that has been the the kind of a, uh, most inspirational thing for me and, and and how we have for example this ino conversion system that that it's something that we haven't been able to do before and that's that's super nice Great. I see a few great questions there in the chat and i think Jokke, you could answer the first one uh, there was an, a question uh, about the AI tool used in Miro uh, in Juha's presentation. So there's a question if um, that's something that Helon has developed or if it's um, part of Miro's service. Yes, that, that was a very good uh, question. And it's it's something that uh, Miro has been uh, releasing or is, is releasing currently. So we have been testing that. We have, uh, like Juha already said, we have been doing our own I know re read system and and this Miro uh, tool is I think it's came out a few weeks ago and I think it's something uh, to definitely if you're using Miro go and test it out but it's it's I think it's in a still in a beta uh, release version so so if you have that access to go and check it out but currently that that tool is only limited to to uh, kind of sorting with one one answer and it, it's still uh, a little bit limited but I think it's really good start with my role. Great thanks Jokke. Um, there's another question that I think Nico might might answer. So um, there's a bit of curiosity to hear how far we have operationalized the use of AI in our projects. So 
uh, do we always use in-house AI solutions for processing customer interview material, or is that only used in, in certain cases? Good question. And uh, well, Jokki gave an example of, of something that we had tried um, outside our in-house, but if we strictly pick something that's in production that we actually use in our projects, it's all in-house. We don't use uh, uh, external systems, not because we don't want to, but because uh, we just, there hasn't been anything suitable for us. And like, like, I, like, like I said, that we are rematching also the design processes. And, and, and for example, Jokke told about this iron reads, so we are able to do uh, affinity analysis with thousands of feedbacks in different multiple markets at once. So uh, uh, yes, we have different tools. We have operationalized them. Uh, we have actually like, you, uh, you have also showed the updated, uh, like this double diamond is almost triple diamond that we have this new phase in beginning of the projects also. So yes, uh, uh, it's not enough to come up with the technology. You have to also integrate it in the design but in the best case, you find some uh, uh, like uh, optimization opportunities in the design process. Then you create tools there. And, 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 and this way we have been able to come up with useful tools. And these tools are our own in-house uh, production. Uh, we don't use uh, external systems. Great, and let me know if you wanna continue on each other's <laughs> questions or answers. Uh, there's another question uh, from Jenny. Uh, how often is AI utilized in your design projects? And maybe, uh, Joachim, you've done a great job uh, kind of being the mastermind of how we utilize these, these tools in projects work. So would you want to answer that one? Yeah, yeah, I could. Uh, it's, uh, it's not a simple answer, but I would say that, that uh, like if you are looking for a number, uh, I don't have a number, but I would say like currently we are doing it more and more. And, and as I said that we have been developing these tools uh, two, three, four years now. And uh, I think it's more and more kind of a uh, normal that we in the beginning of the project think about, okay, what kind of a problem we have in, uh, here in hand. And then we look at the kind of like all the tools and, and ways we we kind of uh, what, what tools should we use there? And then we kind of decide on the, the methodology. And, and I would say more and more, we are leaning towards so that we are able to use these, these uh, AI tools that we have. But I would say like uh, we have these, these uh, cases where it's definitely useful. For example, when we're talking about kind of a uh, bigger, bigger project where we are concentrating on on multiple countries or multiple uh, kind of a, uh, let's say more complex things that we want to uh, uh, maybe have more uh, bigger uh, uh, respondent number or or kind of like a bigger audience that we we cannot uh, rely only on the uh, qualitative. Side so usually those cases we we more and more are using these INA tools but uh, if if uh, saying a number I would say it's close to maybe one uh, one out of three projects is, is is something that we already use and I think it's it's getting high, higher and higher all the time. And Jokke, we've worked together for quite a few years and I know that you come from a design background. How has your kind of learning process been uh, going from purely design background to kind of becoming this machine learning machine learning tool user? Yeah, I would say uh, like uh, uh, it's something that that uh, when I've, I'm talking with people who, who uh, uh, I tell that, okay, I have been uh, using these machine learning tools and they say, oh, you, you must be, you must know, know how to code and stuff. But actually I don't code, uh, I, I code this much. So, so basically you don't have to code and you don't have to kind of uh, have this, uh, uh, let's say, uh, super big understanding on this uh, um, kind of coding side, but, but to understand that the kind of uh, what the, uh, what kind of uh, uh, kind of what is the idea behind there in the, these machine learning uh, methods? That's the kind of a, a thing, and I think it's for for us designers. It's usually we are very curious to to find out how things work and how how uh, kind of how to tweak stuff. So I think that was the 
kind of easy way to when when uh, kind of uh, learning these. So so I would say it's it's quite natural for us designers to also take these tools into our kind of uh, uh, scope. Great, and there's a question here on the chat about um, current applications in real customer cases. So would either of you wanna give another example of, of a project that we've done here at Helon where we've utilized uh, our machine learning tools? Yeah, sure, I think we both can give a couple unless we give the same ones. Uh, <laughs> but for example, uh, we analyzed thousands of uh, employee feedbacks and found the relevant contents from there and were able to define um, the kind of central elements for a new strategy for this whole organization. And second is that I, I, I will still bring up the uh, shopping center example that we already uh, told in the uh, slides. But I think it's interesting because we are not only analyzing that which factors are important with the, um, uh, like the business KPI, but we are quite literally analyzing the ROI, the return on investment for that KPI. We are analyzing that if these different factors increase, how much they will increase the KPI, not the correlation, but the change itself, different business question. And I think that's super interesting. And, 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 and so far it has been also quite beneficial, I would say. Yeah, maybe I could bring a little different uh, aspect that we have, we have also been doing this, um, uh, we call them human centric segmentation type of uh, segmentation works. And, and it's something that uh, like, uh, Traditionally, design designers have been doing these profiling uh, cases, and and we this is kind of our take on the the how how might we kind of uh, in, involve this this more numeric uh, understanding on these kind of uh, motivational profiles and have these kind of segments combined with these motivational profiles, and and this is something that we have been doing for for example. Uh, a uh, couple of uh, uh, transportation, public transportation services, and and uh, uh, some other uh, private sector clients, and 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 there we have been able to quite nicely find the kind of uh, right segments and and the, the segments to understand the actually the motivations in those segments and, and to pinpoint that which segments you should actually be concentrating on and which segments you should actually be kind of uh, uh, doing your uh, product devel development or service development and, and thinking and also kind of finding those, those uh, key drivers for those segments. So, so those are quite interesting. And there, the, the kind of, um, um, I, I would say that machine learning is, is one tool in those, those projects. It's not, it's not kind of a driven with machine learning, but rather it, it's a tool that helps us uh, finding those segments and and, and uh, other stuff is is more of this traditional design doing. Super interesting. Uh, there's a great question now on chat that I'm dying to ask you guys. Um, so there's a question that if the current role of AI in service design is creating insights out of information, what could be the next level? Should I take this first? I think uh, yes, it's 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 of course about creating insight. But as said, we we are very uh, kind of uh, keen and and, and uh, ins inspired by the fact that that for example, this INA conversion, it's not only about insight, but actually about direction. And I think direction is definitely one of the things that that is is uh, kind of a some something that will be more and more so so understanding which direction we should be developing things and, and understanding that kind of a, um, not only the insights about uh, why but uh, kind of the uh, where to and and uh, with kind of what what type of forces so so understanding the different 
uh, kind of a, because you always have different aspects and you have to kind of wait on on those aspects and when you understand those kind of a, what is the direction and, and uh, with what uh, speed we should go in to that that direction i think that's really interesting yeah definitely and sometimes the uh, benefit of Massing learning on computation doesn't come that it's more intelligent than human. Sometimes it's enough that it's even faster. It makes it possible to make uh, projects that will have been too cost ineffective before. Of course, best combination is when it's both, and that's what we are aiming here, and, and uh, that's what we believe we have also succeeded. And, and also, interesting future direction could be these different generative models that we could, uh, for example, create different descriptions of services or like uh, um, have models to write first versions of the contents for us and, and expand our imagination. But we are quite far from there, but uh, it's definitely a possible direction. Uh, uh, but I think um, this current paradigm of, of human and computer discourse is, is, is something that will, will um, it will take a long time for us to explore all the possible implications. Great, um, and I think we could take a final question. Um, what are the biggest challenges in using AI in this kind of work? Would Nico want to start? Okay, yeah. Um, well, it depends who you ask and, 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 and in what context you ask. But of course, there are quite many challenges. Some of them are related to the hype, the kind of organizational immaturity, the expectation management, what it does, what it doesn't. Uh, second is that, um, that you have to have quite, they, they don't solve all the problems and, 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 and it's, it's that you have specific tools to specific problems that have approach and, and they are just tools for our designers. So uh, it, it's also the challenge is that it's really hard to just buy some solution because from a business and an and, and engineering point of view, it doesn't even make sense in, in, a, in a way that you uh, try to have a generic solution to a specific problem, but, but, but uh, it's, it's about uh, understanding the whole mathematical and and, 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 and statistic fields and, and, and coding and then building some specific solutions to specific problems. Of course, we are in good position at Hello because we are a design agency uh, filled with uh, quite um, creative and, and interesting people. So uh, we are able to create these tools and we have people who also try them. So we have the place to try them, but, but uh, um, uh, it's, it's and, 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 and then uh, it's not always maybe easy to find the people who will build these tools. So it's, it's um, problems like that, that the kind of, the, I would say the problem, how to actually apply it in real world, when you actually have to walk the walk, when you have talk to talk. Yeah, I can maybe add there that, that definitely what, what Nico said and, and in uh, if we think about the the kind of design problems and and what what kind of things we need to solve so they are not kind of a one size fits all type of uh, problems so so we we have these wicked problems and and we need to first really hard to think about that how should we solve this uh, we, is the, the are we kind of a, uh, getting right answers if we solve it in this way and then trying to understand that, okay, are the tools that we, are, we have now uh, capable of solving this issue in a right way? And I think it's, it's uh, something that we have been now kind of uh, mastering that, that we have uh, certain tools that, that actually fit in, in not only one problem, but, but uh, kind of a good set of problems, not all the problems, but set of problems that we can, we can solve uh, uh, with our tools. And in a way, I think it's, it's something that uh, it, it, the machine learning is, is it's not like a hammer that you just go go and uh, kind of uh, try to solve every problem with some, one tool so so you always need to think about that kind of the problem and, and is it actually suitable for for that problem so 
related to these challenges, there was an additional question about this human-centric segmentation that you mentioned, Jorge. Um, so you mentioned kind of utilizing different inputs, uh, text, speech uh, that we collect, but do you then integrate existing data from customers or is that something that you can utilize in this process? Yes, yes and no. It always kind of depends. Like a, I think one challenge is, is that, that you always uh, end up that, okay, we have this data. Can you do magic with this data? And usually we, we have to say that, okay, no, most, most likely no, but we have to kind of figure out that is that, that data suitable for, for our purpose. But, but this, uh, for example, if we're talking about this human-centric segmentation, there we kind of need the, the basic set of data that, that we are actually are capable of doing that this kind of a machine learning clustering type of uh, thing and they, that type of data is, is quite uh, specific but then you can add uh, add uh, to, to that data to that those segments you can add add stuff and that that can be kind of a there there is kind of well not it's not limitless but there's lots of things that you can do to add there so 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 basically you can always add stuff, but it's it's always a kind of the combination how you do it, it is uh, crucial. Good answer. <laughs> Great. Uh, thank you so much, Nico and Joachim. It's been really interesting to to hear your responses to the questions here. We're gonna um, be ending the session in just a bit, but before you go, there's a there's a very um, cool invitation for you guys for the next event. So our next Dare to Share event is on 27th of January. And this event will not only be pushing the, the design field forward, but we're actually going to push beyond heteronormative bias. So our London design director, uh, my dear colleague, Andreas Patichis, is gonna be sharing his very provoking talk uh, about something new. It's not going to be about CX, but QX, which is the queer experience. And I really, really emphasize that you should come listen to this talk. Uh, it's quite a new topic within the field, and we have a, a great expert talking about this. And we call on all of you, uh, allies, advocates, forward-thinking business leaders and managers, uh, and all inclusive design enthusiasts to join the discussion on the 27th of January next year. Uh, and you can find the link to the res registration of the next Dare to Share event um, on the chat now. So please go and click it and, and join the event before you, before you leave this session. Thank you so much to the audience and to our great speakers today. Um, and with that, I'd like to wish you all a great, great rest of the day and a great rest of the year. And I really hope to see you in our next session in January or in another Dare to Share event soon.